Hi, this is Sarah Lacey backstage at TechCrunch Disrupt, and it would not be a New York event without having a Wall Street guy. You're the closest of a Wall Street guy we would actually let in the building at a tech event. Howard okay. Lindzen of Stock That's Stock not a compliment. Twits. That's not a compliment. Well, you're a Venn diagram. Never. It's a compliment towards Wall Street. It, the point is you're less douchebaggy than most Wall Street guys, so we let you in. According to who, but uh, that's a compliment. That, Thank that's you. my judgment call. Tell us in a nutshell how Stock Twits is doing. Stock Twits, in a nutshell, is doing better than Bank of America and better than Citibank <laughs> and a little less as good as LinkedIn. <laughs> so it's very easy to do better than Citibank. They have, they do a lot of money, but the government helps them out. We have no government help. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't taken any TARP money yet, but we're willing. Yet. If somebody's <laughs> out there with TARP money, we would take it. <laughs> you know, ever the big issue with New York startups, and we've sort of been discussing the New York startup scene ad nauseum here for two days, is are kids stopping going to Wall Street? Are we keeping kids off the street? I hope so. I think. Here's, here's what I said, is that the LinkedIn, and you wrote a great post, and I Thank linked you. about so we're not kissing butts, we're friends. We've, we've rolled <laughs> dice in Vegas together, but the, uh, and I've seen her in a, in a bathing suit. Yeah, without this. <laughs> oh, Thinner days. Without that? The, uh, I had that. So, so the thing is, Wall Street is not invited to this party. Mm -hmm. Therefore, only the media is invited. And what does the media know what to do except talk about bubbles? Right. Even though there is no bubble. There's right. still a bubble, as I would say on my blog, there's still a bubble in banking. There's a bubble in gold. But there is not a bubble in LinkedIn. LinkedIn's right. a phenomenal company. <laughs> Ten years to build. Well, the, Real defi business. the definition of a bubble is not one company. The definition of a bubble is me walking down the street and everybody owning shares in the same stock mm -hmm. and talking about it all day. LinkedIn is catching the imagination of people because it was caught off guard. People and were caught off guard. there have been no big growth companies going public. There's been huge pent-up demand for investors to buy growth stocks, and no one's been going public. And it's been building a business for 10 years. I mean, there's just, there's nothing bubbly. I mean, you can say it's overvalued. That's a different argument, yeah. but there's nothing bubbly about this company. No, no, no. Gold is a bubble. LinkedIn is, is a bull market. Now, LinkedIn may only be, end up being worth three billion. I mean, right. it's up it may to be the execution. Overvalued. But it's it may, it's up to the execution now. But as I say about LinkedIn, and it's hated even on stock twits, it's kind of the sentiment is like, oh my God, even that overvalued. But we talk more overvalued, not bubble on stock twits. But the point is, it's a day old. They just gave birth to their ticker symbol, right? LNKD. Let's give it a little time. The stock well, is definitely. I guess what irritates me about it is who didn't think this was going to happen. I mean, I wrote something a couple weeks ago that basically said, and actually in my book in 2000, which came out in 2007, I said, LinkedIn is going to be the first of this generation to go public. It's going to have a huge pop because there's going to be pent up demand and everyone's going to call it the next Netscape moment and overstate it and say it's a bubble. Like, none of this should have been a surprise to anyone who's been watching the industry. Yeah, but it was a surprise. And here's why it was a surprise. Because even I'm somewhat of a professional and I really thought I'd be able to buy stock I put an order in to buy stock in the 40s, not watch. Yeah. The last time I've ever done this was Chipotle's. I was away, I put an order to buy 10,000 shares of the Chipotle's because I uh -huh. love the company. My daughter and I eat there every day. I've talked That's about it for five years. That's usually our uh, passwords for things at TechCrunch. At Chipotle? Which I should not say. On, on, we're going to have to change them all now. But yeah, change because it Mike to, loves it. Because Mike loves it. Change it to diarrhea because that's sometimes what happens. The, the, the issue around this is Chipotle's was the last great growth company that went public. It doubled the first day. People were like panic. The stock's at two hundred and eighty dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it debuted at twenty, opened at forty. The last time I tried to buy stock like that, I got it, and I called my broker, and I thought I would buy Chipotle's at twenty bucks. I got it at forty dollars. I was panicked. I was already paying two hundred thousand dollars more than I thought. Right. On LinkedIn, I was a little smarter. I so I thought I put in an order to buy the same amount of shares at forty-five dollars, mm -hmm. thinking that it wasn't going to be that successful. The first trade was eighty-five dollars. So would I buy it? The degree no. of the pop, I think, surprised people. Surprised but everyone me. knew it was going to pop. I did People have been wanting a big social network. To, I mean, look at what's been happening with the China stocks. Yeah. You know? But it, that will end badly. Oh, yes. The, it, it will end in the tears. American the American secondary markets will end in tears as well. Yes, that will end in tears. People think AngelList will end in tears. I think AngelList is truly the best company to come out of, uh, that obviously not talked about a lot. But the reason AngelList will work, too, is that people in Europe, people in Russia, people in Africa who are first generation maybe wealth and want to invest in Silicon Valley, AngelList is going to be like the Facebook of investing. Okay? You know what's interesting to me is it's like, you know, there are all these things in the late 90s that 
didn't do so well and have come back and sometimes had better life. This is like the reincarnation of MeVC. Do you remember what a train wreck MeVC was? It was that Draper Fisher Jurvetson vehicle that was a publicly traded VC fund and was pointed but to it, as the it, height of the fo of folly. We're seeing the same thing with a lot of this now. We're seeing the same thing, but the, 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 the people involved at the early stage have a different vision. They're not as driven by 10 homes. They're not driven by 10 cars. I understand that, but we both know Henry Blodgett always writes about this mythical dentist who's buying secondary shares in, face, in Twitter on the secondary market. And I don't but buy Henry Blodgett the, I don't, now just writes stuff. I know, he makes it up. Stuff. He makes it up. That's it's why you should only read TechCrunch. But completely, and I'm an investor in Al Anzar, <laughs> and I say this with love. I, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> but, so. but we know that secondary markets will get pushed to a ridiculous level. They already are. It will, but it will get more ridiculous. Yeah. It will end in tears. But, but the public what markets, I don't think we're seeing it. But let's look at what happened. Second market, an incredibly interesting <coughs> company, but basically a banker for private deals. Their revenues last year, 40 million. Still tiny. Yeah. We're talking about still specs. Yeah. So until Goldman, Bank of America, shitty bank, and all the rest of these banks get in on the business, it's not a bubble. They're trying. They're chasing. Everyone They're wishes paying, it uh, would be a bubble. That's yeah. the irony. We don't have a bubble. All right, we got to wrap. Thanks, Howard. All right, nice to see you.